This is the instructions video for the Shaper workstation. In this video, we're gonna go through the workstation, using it alongside Origin, how to get the best out of it. We're gonna start with all the components, break them down, look at all the features, see how they go together, and then walk you through a few configurations, the common ones that you'll use. Here's the Shaper workstation as it comes in the package. Clamping face is on the back, so we pop that off first. So here's the clamping face, lots of slots for clamps and we actually include some clamps that get you going. We'll get more into the details of that in a second. Here is the main body. This is the underside. So you'll see there's actually some tapped mounting holes for various work surfaces. Little rubber feet so that when you flip it around and place it on your work surface, it just doesn't jiggle about too much. So then this little protrusion here enables us to clamp to this. There's a slot for MFT tabletops where you can fit your clamps through there. And then there's holes for if you want to permanently mount or you know screw it into your work surface. So we'll do that here to start with. So I'm just using some washers and we'll put that in there. This is the sort of more destructive, but super straightforward way to mount it. Now that's fixed in place, not going anywhere. So what we have here is a super flat plane of tape with a durable adhesive across the top of it. So this means we don't have to keep using shaper tape. That's gonna remain in place, and then we're gonna work out in front of that. So this front face has been machined to exactly 90 degrees. So you can always be confident you're at 90 degrees, no matter where you mount your clamping face. So there's three locations here. We can mount it flush with the top. So that's just ever so slightly below your tape plane. But if you need to cut and you're gonna intersect with this aluminum, there's two different options. We can lower it down to the 25 millimeter height. And that's a spoil board that'll fit behind there. Or we can go down one more to the 50 millimeter height. And we have a spoil board that'll fit there. So we'll put our clamping face on the 25 millimeter height. So this is at the 25 millimeter height. And then you'll notice it's sitting loose at the moment. We just tighten these up. It doesn't have to be too insane. Now we have a very strong 90 degree relationship between these two planes. Now these are the vertical alignment pins. You'll notice everything's been developed as a system. So everything's using the same four millimeter hex wrench and we include that. They just back out and give you a perfect vertical reference edge. It's a really cool little feature. So they stow away when you don't need them, but this will get us a perfect 90 degree angle. Every time. And it's always gonna be in a consistent location because we index using this system that's all guaranteed to index into the same location every time. And we have symmetrical pair that lock in on the opposite side. Exactly the same idea. That's a known index point that's never gonna change that you can confidently come back to at any stage. Here are some examples using the vertical alignment pins. We ship with two of these clamps with the Shaper workstation. So you can see they work great for most situations straight off the bat, but also the T-slot are industry standard. Eight millimeter slot at the top with a machined 15 millimeter T in behind. So most of the clamps you have sitting around that are standard designed for T-slots will actually work in here perfectly well as well. So now we're gonna look at how we attach our spoil board. The spoil boards are made of nice MDF, 25 millimeters high and 50 millimeters high. We ship two of these, they're user replaceable. You can make your own and we include the dimensions in the manual. The spoil board prevents your stock from chipping out as the cutter passes out the back side of the material. It also provides space for the cutter to travel without colliding with the aluminium body or clamping face. So you'll notice there's a gap behind our spoil board here. So I'm going to tension this with these little cams. You'll see how it comes out and applies pressure from behind the spoil board. So we can use the hex wrench here again. With the spoil board there, we're going to just slowly apply pressure and you'll see it come out and just touch your object. You don't want force, otherwise the front face that you're indexing against, it'll be pushed proud of that. So we just want it to touch that and then you match that distance with the others. You'll, you'll feel it just touch, but you don't want it to push it. 
So that means now our spoil board is preventing chip out behind our object with the pressure coming from this little cam. Clamping face is all ready. Our spoil board is prepped. We're at the right height. On to the next phase. Now going to show you how to support Origin out beyond the surface. Here we have the support arms. So we're going to create a little platform out the front here for supporting Origin as it cantilevers out over this surface. If you were to do a big tenon, you want to make sure Origin doesn't rock as it comes out the front. So these are removable, enabling us to clamp any number of you know, long, strange shapes in here. But we can always put these back to the same location. If you ever have doubts about the height of these, in the bottom here you'll see a little set screw that can be adjusted to change the height of this, just up and down ever so slightly, should you need to make an adjustment there. So here are the two support arms. They slot down there, and you'll notice they sit loose until you tighten them up. And we're going to do up the little lock screw. This is now very sturdy. And here's a little detail I like. The locking screws have a little elongated point, which gives you a quick idea of what state they're in. So they're currently locked, unlocked. So you can see now, loose, loose. And then when you lock them, they both face in basically the same direction there. This is the support bar. It has some little clamps that slot in here, quickly secure this in place. So the pressure that these apply can be adjusted here. They should be set appropriately from the factory, but if you're able to move it around, you can just tighten and loosen this. And these have a little nylon attachment so they don't move. So it's a very sturdy, very flat, very consistent surface that this surface matches our tape surface. So notice these little mounting points here. These are designed so that the support bar attaches and then that gives you a very clean reference height for zero. So we can now keep these two points engaged and push this up and you'll see at the top there I get a very confident zero point. Now that we have our plane set up, our support bar is coplanar with our tape field, we can confidently run Origin across here without cantilevering out, hitting any bumps, and that'll enable us to accurately cut safely and precisely throughout. Next up, we're going to look at how to fit a tenon at an angle. So this is like a stool leg or something. You'll notice the standard indexing pins are not much help to us. So here's how we'd start out with our stock. That we want a fixture in here, something like this. We have the ability to do that. Here's the angle fence, which will help us fixture at whatever angle up to about 45. You'll notice the two index pins serve as a reference. And then we have a little eight millimeter screw there, which can be done up firmly or with a lot of these, you can loosely tighten things just while you're working and then tension them up the whole way. For this particular operation, we're gonna use the support bar in this state to get us a reference angle here. Now we can continually come back to that location with future gel eggs ready to go. So that's now fixed and we're ready to cut. Notice even with this all fixtured up, we can still get in here and mount this at one of the alternative heights. A lot of effort has been put into making sure various touch points are accessible regardless of what state you're in. So this is now the 50 millimeter height, same process again. Our angle hasn't changed, so that doesn't need adjusting. Just bring this up. Now make sure these aren't doing major torquing operations as you tighten them up. You can get it so that it's pulling away from your index points if you don't have them nicely aligned at the beginning. But that's ready to go. Make sure you leave enough clearance here for whatever cutter to clear your material. So here you can see we've got our flat plane, our support bar and our tape field are all 100% coplanar and that enables us to cut this element and 
smoothly transition across it, even though we're cantilevered a long way out from the original support body. The support bar actually takes care of us and guarantees us safe, precise operation with our origin to create a shape like this. To provide flexibility, we've got the alignment pins on the right-hand side as well. So you can flip and rotate the angle fence 45 degrees in the opposite direction and have two setups or just more ranges of angles you can use. Here's our shelf. This enables us to quickly clamp things in place and work on small awkward elements quickly and efficiently. So it's set up in a way we have these T-slot attachments which fit in these channels here combined with a quick release lever that has three positions. The lowest position is kind of free floating. The second position is a little firmer. And then the final position is fully clamped. So that's locked in place. So that enables us to very rapidly get elements ready to go. So we'd put it in the second location, bring it up a little high. With our support bar, we can press it down, confirm we're aligned, and then bring it all the way up to clamp it in place. Now this element is co-planed to our tape field and we're ready to cut it. Really efficient, reduces the barrier to getting projects up and running. The spoil board on top, cut files will be available via Shaper Hub. So the idea is you can expand upon this, replace this, adapt it. So here's a quick example of one I've been using. I have these little hole pattern and pins I can place wherever I like. You can make whatever you wish. That'll give you a lot of flexibility there. Here's an example of a great little project that traditionally is quite hard to work hold. Here's the original stock you'd start with. Traditionally, you'd end up sort of shimming areas around this to get the same height for your tape field as this. We're gonna work with a little shelf here. So here we have a really robust aluminum framed shelf with a little custom spoil board on top and a little canned lever to lock it in place. But it'll slot into these channels and then, so in this state, it moves with just a modest amount of friction, which is quite good for getting things prepped to the right height. And then we've also got the ability to really clamp it all the way up. And at that point, it's basically fixed. Notice at the bottom, these don't continue the whole way through. So you don't have to worry about pushing it down too far and having it fall on your feet and uh, damage anything. So it only comes out the top, which means you need to remove the foil board. And in this case, we're actually going to bring this up to its top position. Same process. Because we're cutting inside the stock, we don't have to worry about colliding with this, with the spoil board, which would have been here. We don't have to worry about the cutter colliding with the aluminium. Notice it doesn't collide with your vertical indexing pins if you leave them out by mistake. And then we would double-sided tape this in place. Because there's a little bit of friction here, I can sort of put it anywhere I like. And then same process, we can bring it up and use that to uh, reference for height. And we can even use that to reference there. If we were to do like a production run of several of these, we would do that and then clamp it down. So that then would be held in place. Getting my double-sided tape prepped. And now if I clamp it in place at that height, it's always gonna be the right height. You notice I'm smooth and flat the whole way out here, and I can now cut whatever shape I want into this and also replace it with the next piece of stock should I want to do more than one. That's nice and secure. With the Shaper Workstation, there's a couple of options for probing strategies. There's one that's probing your stock itself, the way we often do. So two probes for the x-axis to measure this point. So bring the cutter down, touch the edge, two, and then y-axis with three. So that gets you a zero point here. Now that's specific to this particular piece of wood. The alternative is to probe the actual leading edge of the workstation. Instead of probing your wood, you'd bring the clamping face up to its top position so that we can probe it here. So this is the x-axis, two, and then this stock is actually indexed against this pin. So that gets me a y-axis that's zero on that pin. You'll see we've got our probe shank exposed there. We're going to bring that down, lower it down so that we're touching this edge. So we can probe against this side once. So we'll take it over to the left side and we're going to make sure we don't fall into one of those T-slot tracks. And then just touch it lightly, probe X. And then we come around and probe this edge because it's indexed against that pin. 
So now we have this workspace where our zero, zero point is this top edge of this stock. And any stock we put in there, so long as it indexes against that pin and is sitting against this clamping face, that's going to be zero, zero. So if I use this anchor point and align it to zero, zero, I'm aligned in that top corner. Obviously, in this state, we don't want to cut this and collide with this panel, but we can drop that down and that indexing plane is gonna remain unchanged. So you'll see, if I was to come back and reuse this workspace, my stock is gonna remain in here as though it was this, even though I could have inserted a new element that's a different shape. To perform this mortise in the top of this organic chair element, we'll create our own little custom fixture. Notice I've backed these out, so the vertical alignment pins are ready to go. And notice there's two holes here. One is for the vertical alignment pin, the other is for a eight millimeter screw to uh, fixture things in place. So this one is cut really accurately to make sure there's not a lot of play there. So you get consistent alignment each time you fixture it up. And the other one is just so that it can be pressed against this surface firmly. Um, now I've got my support arms out. I can set this in here like so. We get positive alignment here. We can see that's held in place appropriately. Then we just tighten these up. So recheck here, everything's fixtured. So quickly we can mortise this out and what would have been quite a challenging task to align accurately, even just work hold is now a walk in the park with uh, custom fixturing. And then you can see we flip this 180 degrees and we can cut this element. One fixture, two parts, nice and efficient. So as you can see, the workstation itself, whilst being feature rich, is only a starting point. You can continue to make all your own fixtures, make your own shelves, and take it in any direction you need to achieve the job at hand. Thanks for tuning in to our workstation overview series. We're looking forward to seeing these in the field and seeing where you all take these. This is just a starting point. Obviously, it's a very robust, accurate, consistently indexable system. That means that Origin's always well supported throughout the cutting operation, as is your stock. And we can guarantee that it's all aligned at the appropriate angles, fixtured in place robustly, ready to get working, which is a common challenge that everyone encounters. Usually they have to work around it with MDF and all sorts of crazy custom jigs. We're hoping to take care of most of that here, meaning your ideas precipitate sooner, you're more productive.